There's lots of things you can do within panels, page layouts, font choices, and more that change how the story is presented and read in comic books. But another tool is the actual style of illustration itself. In this episode, I want to look at Loose Ends with art by Chris Brunner and colours by Rico Renzi, and what Brunner's line art choices mean for how we interact and engage with the story. Quick reminder before we start this episode that the latest issue of the Eisner Award winning Panel by Panel magazine is available right now, so you can find that at panelxpanel.com. And you're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. Brunner and Renzi's work is so interesting in Loose Ends, it deserves such a deep look, and so I just want to kind of scratch the surface a little bit in this episode. And the first thing that really stood out to me on Loose Ends is the character illustrations. So not so much their acting, but how they're actually drawn. From the very opening of the miniseries, you can see rendering decisions made on the figures. So on the first page, you know, let's take a look at this panel here, right? So there's an arm and a hand on the steering wheel. You can see the roughness of the hands around the knuckles and the bicep with its kind of double lines. And the forearm only has these sort of hairs kind of, you know, sketched in. Taken as a whole composition, the roughness of the lines gives it a different edge to something that's clean cut. This is a really hard thing to articulate, even visually, because we don't have a clean version of the same image to work with, but what they've done is a sort of rough approximation of what that might look like to give you an idea of the difference. So in one example we see it looks very clean, and so the focus is less on the presentation of the image and more just on the content. When you consider Brunner's panel, however, the lines themselves have attributes to the story. They aren't just there to create shapes, but they, they give the shapes a kind of energy and narrative. They draw attention to the way it is drawn, which therefore evokes a kind of mood to the story. This is a story about downbeat characters on the fringe, and so the art gives it the same quality, right? The whole thing feels rough. A few pages later in the bar, you get a better idea on how Brunner is using this, because there's a fine line balancing the rough with the readable, and this is the most key thing here. If you take a look at the character in the background in the Panthers jersey, even at a distance, and someone being in the background of the image, the character is very, very easily readable. We understand that he's this kind of big, thick dude, a sort of casual slouch to his seated position, but you can see how he's almost kind of sketched in. If you look a little closer, you can see it a little clearer. The legs are scratchy, the arms are scratchy, the chest is scratchy. And you can see that from the original composition too, he, he just has that quality. And yet there's no loss of clarity in the figure. Because what Brunner does is make the decision to have these thick outlines on almost every single character in this story, which creates an incredibly strong silhouette. And that's the key thing, because it's in that silhouette that Brunner is really doing most of the work on building these characters on the page. Let's just flip back to the first character on the second page of the first issue, right? In that final panel, we can see very, very clearly this guy's shape. It's kind of skinny, scrawny, but standing tall as he lights a cigarette. And the silhouette is resoundingly clear in this image while again, the scratchiness of the style within the figure is also visible. I think the big takeaway from this is the scratch. However, the silhouette is aided by the thickness of the line it's drawn with. And every single figure, right, is this, a thick outline that holds the clarity. The argument seems to be from the work that if the silhouette is strong enough, it almost doesn't matter what happens within it. And that does require something else to work though, beyond the thick brushy outline it needs the silhouette to also build the character. Because if that's what you're relying on to evoke the mood, then it needs to do that. A few pages later, I think gives a really, really good example of how Brunner is doing this, as the barmaid's seen essentially here in pure silhouette. Again, the thickness of the line holds the shape, but the shape itself is also really kind of cartooned, used to heighten the effect of how we're supposed to see this character. Initially here, you know, clearly overly sexualized, and in this instance, that's all that stands out. In the other panels, we see her more clearly, and that effect though is still generated through the cartoon silhouette. It's setting up expectations for something that occurs later in the story, but in contrast to the last episode, it's doing it wordlessly. To flick back to that Panthers jersey guy, right, now we understand that the silhouette is particularly important in this comic, you can now see how that contrasts character to character. Here's a panel with a bulking, hulking man, while a much smaller, skinnier character stands opposite. The silhouette tells you much of what you need to understand here, that he's more powerful than her physically. The scratchiness in the colour and in the detail adds to the unease and the mood of the scene, but it's a silhouette, ultimately, that does the work of communicating specifics of these individual characters. And the final point in this line art choice is what Rico Renzi does with colour holds, which is just as important to me in establishing focus and intention on these panels. Let's go back to that very, very first page, right, of the forearm and the hand on the steering wheel. Everything within the car is what we actually end up looking at. A huge part of that is because Rico Renzi puts a colour hold on everything outside of the vehicle through the windscreen. 
So what's outside gets flattened out into this background, washed out in the same tone, so that none of it feels too individual. And even though you can pick out details, what it actually becomes is part of this much larger concept of just the background. What he's looking at is less important than the idea that something does exist beyond that. So especially since they've already established this in the panel before, it's a way of controlling the power and focus of the image while still allowing the world to exist beyond that. If we look a bit later in the first issue, there's a scene at the bar where our barmaid is putting something on in the jukebox. And the only thing with a solid black line is her silhouette and the jukebox. And so what do the lines then tell us about what we should be seeing? We're not looking at an entire composition so much here as we are looking at the silhouette of the barmaid in the foreground. The background itself is important in that there's characters that you need to see in the scene, but we're less interested in them as specifics than we are more generally. And this happens in numerous instances throughout the comic. You know, the weight of the lines in the scene really dictate to you what's supposed to be important to us as readers. And it works on the basis of establishing something as important while flattening out most other details just to exist in whole concepts of backgrounds or foregrounds. And so there are compositional choices, there are color palette choices, there are framing choices, juxtaposition decisions, and more that direct and dictate the story. But the very way a silhouette is drawn, the thickness of the line that creates it, the, the style and shape and feel of the lines that exist within that silhouette, and even how the lines are flattened into other lines, also add so much to this concept too. It's not just what an artist draws or doesn't draw that becomes vital to the way a reader understands the story, but it's also the way in which they choose to draw the very lines that make up those images. Next time you fall in love with a comic book or a comic book artist, take a look at the way their lines are composed and ask yourself, what are you getting from that? What is the artist trying to infer with the very way that they draw this story? And Loose Ends is a perfect place to start understanding just how the very approach an artist chooses to draw a comic in adds so much to the story and the mood and the feeling of the narrative. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of Strip Panel Naked, you can support the series on Patreon. We can get access to over three years of exclusive writing and annotations. You can also get the eyes on the winning magazine I edit at panelxpanel.com and follow me on Twitter at Hassan Oe. Finally, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes and I will see you next time.